Hey, welcome back. So today's project is I'm starting the rear TK1 off-road sway bar install. So I have the truck up on the hoist, um, full droop. I got the coils off the coilovers so I can cycle it up and down. Uh, let's see. So when you think of these off-road sway bars, the first thing that comes to mind is you always hear anti-rock, anti-rock, made by Rock Jock. Uh, yeah, they're, I think they were probably the first company to make these off-road sway bars. So they're the most well-known and it's kind of like a generic name. Uh, anti-rock is what everyone calls a sway bar nowadays. Um, so TK1 Racing is a, another company. Um, actually, Brian Racy, I think, found them first. I never heard of them until Brian talked, of them, talked about them. Um, so, I started checking out both companies. Um, obviously, the Ford Explorers, Bronco 2s, there's not bolt-on parts available like the Jeeps, Wranglers, JKs, JLs, TJs, LJs, all that stuff. If you have a Jeep, you can go to the store, point or click and ship any bolt-on part you want. Whereas what we do, um, everything's got to be custom. So I was comparing Rock Jocks, anti-rock um, stuff. Uh, they do have a universal series. They have basically the width of your frame plus whatever inch or the width of the frame plus at least three inches is what you, generally your your bar is um, and then there's different arms lengths available um, rock jock does seem to have more options as far as the actual arms go they have ones that offset out they have ones that offset up which make it nice but they didn't really have the overall length or width bars that I need for the Explorer. Uh, the rear of the Explorer frame outside to outside is roughly 41 inches and the front necks down to like 30 inches outside to outside. So the rule of thumb is to take the outside to outside uh, measurement and add three inches and that's the size bar you're looking for. So let's check these things out. All right, so here is the rear sway bar kit again from TK1 Racing. Um, general rule of thumb, I'm not going to cover everything, but whatever stroke or the amount of travel that your shock has, you want to match that length with the same length arm. So I have 16 inch coilovers in the back. These are 16 inch arms. So you get, the tube is optional. I mean, you can come up with your own tube. It's inch and three quarter diameter tube that you mount. And then this is the torsion bar that goes inside that tube. And then there's either Delrin bushings or aluminum bushings that come with the kit. So Del uh, the aluminum bushings go in the tube here, both sides. And then there's a little bit of grease and silicone applied. And then the torsion bar rides inside the tube. And then just like the inner rocks, splined, spline goes on the spline. And then I opted for the double shear arms. So double shear at the arm itself and then double shear at the axle side. Then they give you a piece of tube here. I think it's uh, what, three quarter inch, I think. You cut that down, that, that's what makes your your connecting arms so that's the kit um, I called and talked to Tony I called and talked to Tony uh, before I ordered anything just to explain to him what my rig is obviously again like I said it's not your typical Jeep build so um, it's a lot more uncommon for people to call up and ask about and explore and this and that. So anyway, give them all my information, you know, the year, four-door, how much it weighs, because I got it weighed last week. Um, I don't know if I've said that in any of my videos yet. So 
You guys guess the weight of the Explorer as it was prior to this video, so before the sway bars. Guess the weight. Um, so obviously I told him the weight, total weight, front weight, rear weight. Um, I will say my weight bias is pretty close. I'm like 52 to 48 front to rear. Um, anyway, called them, told them all this information, told them my suspension setup, four link, coilovers, the lengths, and then he recommended me uh, the torsion bar for it. So basically, based on weight of the vehicle, somewhat wheelbase of the vehicle, and suspension, there's like rock crawler, ultra four, desert. There's like four different categories, and then inside each category is like three different stiffnesses of the torsion bar. So based on my information, he put me into an Ultra 4 style bar, medium rate. The medium rate is for high flex, high articulation. So I will uh, get into more details later. Uh, it's, these videos I try to keep shorter, but there's so much information <laughs> that it just goes on and on and on. All right, so looking at the back of the truck here, like I said, I got a full droop, the coils are off, the limit straps are disconnected. So with the coilover set up, four link, at full droop, the coils, everything kind of re uh, arcs forward a little bit. So you can see the, the coils, or the coilovers are slightly forward. So that tells me that's my, that's the most, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's the closest that shock will get as far as contact to my sway bar, to the arm. So then I kind of hold the bar up here and see, you know, obviously there's coils on it. So anyway, I came up with a spot roughly right here, the center where that tube will actually go through the frame on both sides and then this will function right in here so the initial idea back before i bought the stuff was this panel is there's nothing structural behind that i thought maybe i would cut this off and the sway bar would be mounted above the frame um but it's not gonna work out that way it's too tight now that i'm looking at it then my exhaust would be in the way, my rear trans cooler lines would be in the way, and then this cross member here with the body mounts around is kind of in a weird spot. So it kind of works out that I'm going to go through the frame, I'm going to go as high up as I can without hitting the top of the C-channel of the frame. And then it also seems to work out that my exhaust is already bent to um clearance my upper links that the exhaust is absolutely not in the way at all for that tube so essentially i'm going to drill be drilling hole saw inch and three quarter hole here and matching on the other side that tube will go through the frame rail and that'll be the structure that the torsion bar sits in so i'm gonna do a full bump test here now the only other thing i'm thinking about clearance wise is how high will my upper links go at full bump if they will interfere with this mounting location. If they do interfere, I have a solution for that. If you watch my other videos, you know that my front upper third link is pre-bent from rough stuff. Here's an, an old mock-up piece I have. This kind of simulates. so. If this was the torsion bar mounting tube through the frame and say it was a straight tube, it would interfere. Using a bent tube, I can snake it right around and get the clearance I need. All right, so I got the truck in the air and I got the axle fully bumped out. Got everything. Uh, I had it on jack stands first on the ground, and then I put some of my trailer straps around the frame and lower links to lift it up, and then I used the uh, heavy-duty trans jack 
and these other jet. You can never be too safe when stuff's in the air. Anyway, axles full bump. I have a piece of uh, inch and three quarter PVC pipe to simulate my sway bar. And in this position, there's plenty of room for the exhaust. And with the straight links, even though I didn't move them up to the upper hole yet, I am good. So that's awesome. So that verifies that I have the space I need. This side I just had to undo, uh, let's see here. My brake line I had right here, but yep, everything's good. All right, so now that I verified that stuff, when I had, at the beginning of the video I showed uh, the axle fully, um, uh, fully extended, full droop, and showed how the uh, coilover leans forward at full droop. So that's where I got my distance here for the arm, and I did a punch hole, you know, I punched the center hole. <laughs> So you'll see now in full bump how much farther away the coilover is than the arm. So the only concern I had was at full full droop is when the coilover moves in. So that's how I got the center point there. So I took some measurements. Um, there's a cross member on top of the frame here I measured from basically five and an eighth back from the cross member tip here and then basically it's an inch and five eighths down from the top and then i also measure from center to hole center to hole to match the passenger side as well so this puts my tube right before the radius of the c channel so it's as high and tight as i can get it and uh i guess now it's time to drill some holes all right, both holes are drilled. Both sides, I had already slipped the tube in and it fits perfect. Used a uh, one and three quarter inch Lennox hole saw with my 90 degree air drill. Worked perfect. I always use a little bit of uh, this tap magic. Cutting fluid when I'm drilling and it really helps. So right now I'm test fitting the tube the tube itself comes um, almost an inch longer than what's needed. So right now what I'm doing is I'm measuring. So you put uh, the aluminum bushings in per side or Delrin, whatever, whatever comes with your setup. And then there's a little white Teflon or plastic washer that goes between the aluminum bushing and the arm. And then obviously you want the spline flush with the arm and then you put the cap on which these are actually optional uh, I don't know why you wouldn't do that or why they wouldn't just come with it for me it's like yeah they're pinched down here but uh, I like the idea of an end cap too so obviously I bought those but I do think they should have came with the uh, with the kit here all right so I got the uh, rear end back at full droop. You see the sway bar tube has plenty of room, obviously at full droop. And uh, I have about a slightly less than a half inch at full bump between the upper and the tube. And that's on my current settings. So again, since I'm not a desert racer, rock bouncer, whatever else, Chances of me doing full bump uh, is basically zero. So I'm not worried about it. So it worked out good. I got about seven eighths, seven eighths distance between the frame on both sides. Nothing's welded yet, it's just sitting there. So now I'm just gonna kind of uh, cycle things, kind of figure out. Um, everything else, I'm going to clean up the tube here, get some measurements as far as where the bottom links are going to go. 
and uh, go from there. All right, so I got the uh, tube in there, side to side, even. Like I said, there's about uh, seven eighths per side with the shoulder of the aluminum bushing sticking out. Just got it tacked in place, both sides. And then something I, I know I touched on it before in my other videos. I only boxed basically from the motor cross member to right past my uh, lower link brackets or uh, upper frame brackets. I left everything else on box purposely because I knew I was going to do sway bars and bump stops and all that other stuff. So. Now that this tube is in here, I went ahead and made some eighth inch plates that will box the inside of the frame where the tube is in. So passenger side, driver side, um, they're pretty much spot on. I was just going to slip these on the tube when I inserted it through the frame but of course I'm off just a tad. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these in half. That way I can kind of individually get these put in place and uh, it'll all be welded uh, nice and tight. All right, so I took those pieces uh, that I cut out there, cut them down the middle, and then it was a lot easier to kind of custom fit them. So. Get everything fit in there and tacked in place. And then there's the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and start burning those in. That's not going to change. All right. Both the uh, inside plates I made for boxing the frame are welded in. And everything's been primed and painted. So time to get this rolling. I got each arm ready um, where the middle arm intersects the ends. I got uh, NICs, and obviously blue lock tight with the bolts, everything's torqued down. I got uh, lock nuts on the clamp side, and I got NICs on the uh, splines. All right, so everything's been painted. Got the bars mounted, arms mounted, I mean. And what I'm doing here is I'm simulating, I'm slightly above level at simulated ride height, about five inches of shaft showing, at, which is my ride height, and then the arm uh, slightly above level, if you can see. So I just cut some pieces of, uh, I don't know, three quarter inch PVC pipe, and then I'm made an equal size per side. I mean a pair of equal lengths so that I could position the double shear tabs. Now, what's easily overlooked, and I've done it in the past, you know, this, when you mount stuff around other things, make sure you can get the other bolts out. So this is mounted high enough so that my Lower link bolts can come out, no problem. And then certain situations like this, if this was a tad lower and you welded this on with the bolt coming from this direction in, you wouldn't be able to get the bolt back out. So it's very important to pay attention to everything. How do I know this? Well, I've done a lot of mistakes in my past. So check your bolt clearances, what comes in and out. Make sure the nuts and bolts are on the right sides and send it. So now that these tabs are located, I'm gonna go ahead and burn those in. And then uh, I'm gonna cycle it with these. These are 10 and a quarter inch pieces of simulated sway bar length. So I'm gonna see how those act. Also notched out the bottom of the shock tower. I have not obviously grounded or rounded it. Just enough for this to pivot up through it. All right, so these are the same 10 and a quarter inch pieces of PVC. This is absolute full bump. 
This is probably a half inch past where I would have the bump stop stop. So this is uh, max, max, max bump. So my cutout worked perfect, no binding. So obviously I will round this out and make it look even nicer yet. So that's it, full bump. Obviously equal on both sides. Now I'm going to do full droop. I already got both links made. Both hanging, primered, first coat of paint. Tabs are welded, primered, and painted. So, wait for these to dry, and then it will be done and installed. All right, sway bar system is installed. Made the uh, links up yesterday as I was finishing. Put some paint on them. Got them all threaded in with uh, anti-seize. So everything's good to go. So yeah, again, that's full. Well, that's more than full droop. Or, yeah, because uh, the shocks aren't even attached on jack stands. But uh, plenty of angle. Basically, the closer you get to like a straight line, they can overextend, and that's what you don't want to do. So that is the setup. It is done. Uh, today I'm starting another video, but it has to do with the limit straps and whatever else and bump stops. So that's coming up next. So that wraps up the TK1 racing off-road sway bar install on the rear of my one-ton V8 Explorer. Cannot wait to go for a test spin. So I'm going to finish this video up. Pretty sure I mentioned it before. Um, if not, here it goes. So this barn that I work in, it's not mine. It's my, uh, it's my dad's. And it was my grandparents. So my dad has it now since my grandparents have, have both passed. And, uh, I would not be doing the stuff I'm doing in all these videos and pictures if it was not for my dad letting me basically take over the barn and he's actually the one who bought me or the barn this hoist um so since it is uh what is it june june something father's day is coming up here in a couple weeks i want to dedicate this video to my dad and uh would not be doing the stuff i'm doing if it wasn't for him allowing me to have this barn and supplying me with the hoist and uh, you know, everything else that he has. He likes to hang out, come down here and chill out with us. So uh, thanks dad, I love you and I appreciate everything. And for those of you watching, um, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, comment, this video, I think I did uh, a little bit better of a detailed how-to versus probably the whole build of the Explorer. Again, once I start building stuff and I get into uh, my groove, videoing and stuff kind of comes after. But some of the upgrades and stuff coming up here, I'll try to do a better, uh, more or less how-to on all that stuff. So catch you on the next video. Like, subscribe, share.